following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off. We got PPI data out this morning ahead of the all-important CPI data out tomorrow morning. And markets, they like a weak PPI number, and we're higher. We're at 5,400 on the dot right now. s and is up by 31 points. Excuse me. That's about 6 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, we're up 9 tenths percent, 18,808, 170 points in the positive. The Dow right now, up a quarter percent, up 104 points, 39,584. And you have the Russell this morning, up by 8 tenths percent, 16 points in the positive, 2,088. We jump over to crude, $80 towards the end of the session yesterday. We're just off that price level at 79.58, down by 48 pennies. We jump over to gold, quite the extension to higher prices yesterday. We make it up to 25.17 in the overnight session. We're just off those levels. We're still up by $3 at 25.07 right now. We jump to notes and bonds on some of that inflation data. And what do you have? You got higher price, lower yield. You got the 10 year, 3.87. How about that? The 10 year, 3.87. We got higher price with the 10 year up by eight ticks right now. The 30 year up by 14 ticks right now. How does that translate over to the dollar index? Well, as you may expect, when we have weaker yield, we're going to have dollar weakness. You have the dollar down about eight pennies at 103.05 right now. We jump over to the VIX, continuing to weaken. We got an 1889 low yesterday. We start the session at 1980 so far this morning. And let's jump over to the headline for the PPI. Now, we get CPI tomorrow, okay? That is the more important number, but PPI prices do matter, especially in this environment where this economic data is forefront with the Fed looming in September with a possible rate cut, the first one in the cycle. Produ producer prices rise less than forecasts. How about July PPI just rising 0.1% on a monthly basis, 22 on a yearly basis? Those numbers are 2%, folks, okay? Yes, there's going to be some volatility. Yes, there are going to be pockets that could be hot or cold, but nonetheless, 0.1% on a monthly basis, 2.2 from a year ago, that puts it at 2% if those are the numbers across the board. Now, those are not the numbers across the board. CPI is going to be a little bit higher expected than those numbers out there. You got PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, not at the 2.2% realm just yet, but nonetheless, the market was looking for a 0.2% gain and comparing to a year ago, they were looking for 2.2%. And yeah, look at these numbers, man, in terms of where we are right now, right? U.S. producer prices, 12 months. We were living in quite a time, and that's the reason why people are stuck on inflation, because we had a run like we hadn't seen before. Even on a core perspective, taking out food and energy, numbers dramatically higher. But this is a miss. The wholesale inflation numbers proceed. The more closely watched CPI, which is out tomorrow on Wednesday. Yeah. So categories in the PPI report that are used to calculate the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, the PCE, were generally tame. Okay, among those categories, physician care costs and airfares declined. Hospital outpatient care was flat. Portfolio management services increased 2.3%. July PCE rate is due later this month. Yeah. The cost of processed goods and in for intermediate demand, which reflects prices earlier in the production pipeline, rose 0.7%, the most since February. Higher diesel costs. Yeah, we got crude at 80 bucks, a little bit higher. The weakness in final demand services reflected in re a reversal in margins during the month after a large increase in June, excluding trade services. Wholesale prices climbed 0.3%. So it's a weak number, definitely less than the market was thinking. And I think all fears right now are that you're going to see another hot number potentially, right? So what's on, what's on the perspective? Well, what's on the perspective is if you really have prices continuing to weaken, 
and miss expectations, then inflation is not the threat. And if inflation is not the threat, then what is the threat? Then the, then the threat that the Fed is going to focus on is going to be potentially economic weakness. And those are the two mandates, right? What are the Fed's two mandates? Full employment and price stability. Price stability has been at the forefront for an extended period of time. We're approaching the area that even Chairman Powell has stated that the risks to the economic growth and sustainability of this economy outweigh at this point some of the risks to inflation, considering where they are, where their rate is right now, and where this economy is, and the unemployment trends, and the wage growth, et cetera, that is dissipating. And nonetheless, markets this morning, 5402, just like that. We're back to 5400. You put this thing on a daily basis. Now, it is interesting. I was looking at some of these charts yesterday. You go back to the run that started in October, 4122. All we did was touch the 382, almost to the tick. Not quite, 10 points. But when you're talking about a 1,000-point move, okay, and you pull back to the 382, you get back on that spike on August 5th to a low of 5120. Let me see, is that even? Let me go back a little further. Yeah, 5120 was the exact spike. I was trying to see if overnight it got a little higher or lower, if that was a print. 5120 was the low there. And what is interesting is the 3A2 is about 5110. So within about 10 points of the exact 3A2 on that run from October. Now, what's interesting here, you go a little big picture on the NASDAQ, okay? and you back this up to where we were in October, NASDAQ did a retracement to the 50% line. The S&Ps hit the 382, but what's interesting on the NASDAQ is it's almost not a fair point to start. Now, yes, there was a rally there, but boy, talk about a slight pullback in the NASDAQ from July of 2023 to October, okay? But the NASDAQ really has a run going that began in the beginning of 2023. That is a one-way trip to double in price. And if you look at that trend, the NASDAQ 100 didn't even hit the 382, which is remarkable. Now, you doubled in share price from about 10,600, right? What's that low? Yeah, 10,500 up to about 21,000, okay? And we didn't even hit the 382 on the NASDAQ. Now, the S&Ps, it's not quite as symmetrical, right? If you try and take where we were at the beginning of 2023, you can see it didn't have the same type of run. The, the S&Ps had a run that began in October. The NASDAQ had themselves a run that began 2023 that the S&P did not contribute in, obviously because of some of the Magnificent Seven out there. But it is interesting in context to see how far we are near the tops and how we didn't even hit a 382 in the NASDAQ 100 and the S&Ps barely hit a 3A2 of the most conservative acceleration starting in October of 2023. And we're well off those levels now, though, with the S&Ps up by 25 points. And we got a weak PPI number, and that is ahead of CPI, which is out tomorrow morning. And then we get retail sales on Thursday as well. And then we get Michigan sentiment, Michigan consumer sentiment on Friday. So we get some important economic numbers coming down the line. Speaking of the economy, when we come back, we're going to talk some Starbucks and some Chipotle. Starbucks, they're out there poaching. They're poaching Chipotle CEO. Yeah, and the market likes it. They're up by $12, and Chipotle is down by 10%. We'll talk about this one when we get back. Starbucks with a new CEO starting in September. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week, exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at tfnn.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory with a little bit of disinflation out there, potentially with those PPI numbers, at least inflation that's a little bit softer than the hotness that we've been used to. And yeah, you talk about um, a divergence of two equities, and I had to, to do a little bit of a double take out there in terms of the moves that you got going on. This gentleman, he must be quite the hot commodity, man, as you have Starbucks up by $13 right now. You're almost talking about $20. I mean, think about this is where some of these numbers, man. So they have one, Starbucks has 1.1 billion shares outstanding. You just added $13 billion to the market cap of this company. And I hope that gentleman uh, negotiated well for his pay package because think about it. If you're the owner of a company and you hire a CEO, and instantly your company becomes $13 billion more valuable, what is that CEO worth? Jeez, these, they, they, we might as well let Elon into this conversation, right? But nonetheless, um, Chipotle, they're going to have to replace that one, man. So their CEO is leaving his role later this month to become the CEO of Starbucks. Now, this gentleman who just made a lot of press when he's doing the, the interviews out there with Chipotle catching a lot of flack about maybe they're not filling the bowls as well as they used to. Maybe they're not as quite consistent as they used to be. But nonetheless, you take a look at the chart of Chipotle. You take a look at the chart of Starbucks, and you're going to see why, man. You take a look at the chart of Chipotle, all right? You back that on a monthly, and since 2017, you're up from 6 bucks to 70 you back it up to where this thing was in 2008, you're a pennies on the dollar compared to where you are now. 
right? Now, this thing was, what did you just have, like a 24 one split, something bonkers on Chipotle. Versus you back up a chart like Starbucks, and you talk about a difference, man. Starbucks flat since where you were in 2019. You back it up to 2015, and you're up $15 from 62. So you're up, what, 20, 25% from 2015 prices versus Chipotle, uh, CMG. From 2015, you're up a six-bagger or so. Nonetheless, pretty remarkable in terms of the divergence out there. But, yeah, now they've had some activist investors going on for Starbucks, spurring them on to make some decisions, and they have. They've made some changes. Starbucks names Brian Nickel as CEO replacing their CEO that's only been in the job for about a year, I think, right? Yeah, so they have the CEO, CFO going to serve as interim CEO until Nickel starts September 9th. And you have Starbucks board chair will become lead independent director. And Laxman Narasimhan, maybe, um, also going to step down on that board seat as they're out as CEO after just over a year in that role. 12 months, didn't get, it, didn't get it done. Not happening, and you're out just like that. The abrupt leadership shakeup comes after activist investor Elliott Investment Management and Starboard. Abbas stakes in the company, and they were in talks to add Jesse Cohen, a managing partner at the activist investor, to its board of directors. And let's see, the coffee chain was also considering setting up committees to review capital allocation and operational improvements. Well, that's something that a strong CEO can probably do himself, right? Committees can help, but you think about it, that's where strong CEOs, you know, there's only a few decisions sometimes that really matter in the CEO role. Capital allocation, operational improvements, those are two of the big decisions. Um, there's some great interviews out there with Bezos talking about how, you know, he makes one good decision a day and that's really all he's getting paid for maybe even a week right what happens is when you rise to the echelons of those companies you're making fewer decisions of much greater importance and yeah pretty remarkable though the percentage man how does chipotle let that happen you think about the run they've been on nonetheless it'll be interesting to see what starbucks gave him especially considering the market reaction where you're up more than $13 billion in market cap. That's got to feel good for that gentleman, man. You sit down, you get hired by a company, and the market says we're $13 billion wealthier this morning as Starbucks shareholders because you're going to be leading the company. All right, nonetheless, remarkable story. We'll see where that one trades out, though, this morning. We jump to Home Depot. Home Depot cuts outlook as consumers stuck in deferral mindset. Now, this is where the Fed's going to get interesting, okay? Retailer says interest rates, uncertainty, pressuring consumers. I would agree. Comp sales have fallen for the seventh, seventh straight quarter. Home Depot lowered its forecast of a key sales metric for the year on expectations that consumers will continue to hold back on spending in the coming months. Now, this is where the Fed is trying to delay things, okay? Because they know, and there are their earnings, there's the bounce back. You drive down to 327.50. You actually hire briefly. The earnings call just began at 9 o'clock. You're trading down $5 for Home Depot on their numbers right now. We jump over to Lowe's. Pretty similar action, down a few dollars on Home Depot numbers. You jump over to Home Depot. And what's going to happen is, and everybody's in waiting mode because interest rates are so high, you can't access the equity in your house to do anything with it if you wanted it. You're at a, the, a spot of limbo. Here, um, it's simply a story of deferral mindset among our customers who have the means to spend but are waiting to do so until interest rates decline. It is interesting. Well, you have a lot of people who have a net worth, but accessing that capital is not as easy as it used to be, at least for a period of time where interest rates were zero for some time. We're at a period of time now where interest rates have been elevated for two or three years and people have not been able to access that capital with a refinance, when refinances used to be as simple as could be to access that capital. Yeah, consumers have shown more sensitivity to economic uncertainty as the year has progressed, hurting demand. People are spending on paint and other smaller projects, but remain on the sidelines for bigger discretionary purchases, including kitchen or bath remodels. Professional customers are outperforming. Do-it-yourself customers 
Yeah, I am. Um, and that's where, you know, the Fed is going to be an, an interesting one because if they start cutting and people have the ability to access that equity and turn it around, et cetera, that's the reason why prices may go up as well. Home Depot, which operates one of the 2,300 stores, said comp sales fell 3.3%, the seventh straight quarter of decline. That drop was worse than what the market was looking for. Adjusted earnings, 467, above analyst estimates. Pretty remarkable, seven straight quarters of declining same-store sales. During the latest quarter, Home Depot closed, uh, closed their acquisition of SRS distribution for $18 billion. Yeah, and that's going to expand the company's footprint with professional contractors who work on pricier construction than do-it-yourself projects, a lucrative market. Yeah, Lowe's is chasing that one for sure, man. All right, we're going to come back for the open. S&P is up by 35 right now, folks. Stay tuned. We got the NASDAQ up 200 points coming into the open pre-market session highs. We'll be right back for that opening bell. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome, folks. We got the NASDAQ right now up 185 points. We're up a solid 1% in the open. S&Ps right now up by 35 points. That's about two thirds percent in the open. Dow up 125 right now. The Russell up by 11. We jump over to two of those equities. Let's see it. Starbucks 
17.6% on the open, up by $13.72. Um, just remarkable. Over a billion shares outstanding. And Chipotle is scrambling today, man. They're down by 8.2%. Their CEO gets poached by Starbucks. I wonder which headhunter got that done, man. Quite the poaching when you think about the moves that they have. Now you got Chipotle out there. How many shares do they have? I mean, check it out. Chipotle's got $1.4 billion. You're down by $5. Man, they're down 7 or $8 billion in market cap. Just a huge percentage hit when you think about it. And then Starbucks. Yeah, up by 17 points. It's just startling numbers from one CEO, but the market has some confidence, man. Uh, they need to get it done. They're in similar areas, premium food services, et cetera. And it's not stopping, man. Starbucks up by 18.2%. Remarkable. We jump over to Home Depot on their numbers. Down, but not as much as they could have been. You're down by $5.47. Down by 1.6% to kick off the trading session right now at 339.93. As the NASDAQ gets an acceleration to 18,853. We jump around to some of the magnificent seven. Apple with a lift up by 1.4% right now. Amazon up by 7 tenths percent right now. Microsoft up a full percentage point. You got Google shares up by 1.4. Meta shares up by 1.2. NVIDIA. There's a lift up by 3.6. Yeah, and the market is looking at it and they're saying, you know what, if prices are dissipating and we're not as worried as we think, then the Fed can shift focus to cutting rates and they're going to start in September and how fast they go will be determined by where the data allows them to go or forces them to go. And we'll see where we go from there. But the writing's on the wall with where we are in yields right now, man. This market is screaming for cuts and we'll see if the Fed obliges. As you know, you're going right back to where we were, man. Right now, you get the 10 year 113.18 right now, and you're talking about a yield of 3.85, 3.86 if you round up, which you should, 3.858. So 3.86 to be fair, the yield on the 10 year right now, but 3.86, man, you better believe. You have a 10 year at 3.86 right now, and we have the Fed overnight lending rate at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent. What does that mean? That means they're coming down, folks. Okay, that means they're coming down and they're coming down quickly. That's what the market's saying. Whether the Fed's going to listen to them, we will see. We talked about Michelle Bowman. Her Fed speak over the weekend, we talked about it yesterday, basically saying there are still risks here, and the risks are not weighted towards an economy which is sinking into a recession. The risks are weighted to the fact that there are still going to be pockets when they begin cutting that could flare back up. And, you know, this is what we talk about when we talk about those housing prices. You're seeing Home Depot out there, right? Well, you know what's going to help Home Depot? If we have rates come down where people start refinancing again and accessing the equity in their homes to do big budget jobs like kitchen remodels, et cetera, versus the small ones that they're handling right now. People don't have the ability to do a $50,000 kitchen renovation, folks, unless they can access the equity in their home in most cases. Oh, I may sneeze here. Hold on. All right. Uh, those are usually jobs that you may need to access some of that equity, especially in the environment that home prices have risen so much, right? If you think about it, home prices have gone up so much in the last four years. Perfect opportunity to access that equity. And that's what the Fed is going to face. So you're going to catch some of that. And that's why they're so hesitant to really bring the cuts. Because when they really bring the cuts, the environment that you're going to see in home prices and with just the access to equity. And that's the reason why those cuts come in, right? It's the reason why they cut to spur the economy. They hike to tighten the economy. It's the cost of capital. And people are going to be able to access that capital and access that equity. And you're seeing it in the Home Depot shares right now. Home Depot is a perfect example of what the Fed controls. Look at this Home Depot chart, man. You are stuck where you were over three years ago, right? Coincides pretty well with where the Fed is after a historic run from Home Depot going from 30, what is it, 35 bucks in 2011 all the way up to right where we are right now in 2021. And then for over three years, we've been stuck at the 350, up to 420, down to 200 and change. And we're sitting right there. Pretty remarkable. 
All right, what else have we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talked about Home Depot. We talked about Starbucks and uh, Chipotle. That's a big one, man. Yeah, and we talked about PPI numbers. We could talk a little bit of real estate, man. You want to talk about that one? Larry Silverstein, he's looking for opportunities, man. How's the real estate going to play in, right? When you talk about um, the older buildings, et cetera, there's going to be a whole generational shift here in terms of we've seen it happen with work from home. you got a ton of buildings that either need to be redone, reassigned to what they're doing over there. But, yeah, his quote, there are going to be many opportunities in Midtown. Yeah, you've got many office buildings that are no longer functional, and banks are finding themselves increasingly in possession of buildings that they do not want to possess. We'll see how it goes, man. Residential is going to find its way increasingly into midtown Manhattan and into what was originally office neighborhoods, Silverstein said. It would make sense. We don't need the office spaces we once needed. And how is that going to shift when we get AI as well? But the days of clocking in at 8.30 in the morning and clocking out at 5.30, five days a week, nonstop, that's the deal. Those days are over, especially in some of those office buildings that are in the mid-range in terms of, you know, you're always going to have the A-star office buildings, um, the marquee buildings, your, your world headquarters type buildings that are going to be in there and anchoring some of these multinational corporations. But you don't need the likes of the office farms that used to exist when many times people can exist in those types of facilities in their own home. Yeah, you've seen that play out. All right, we're just seeing numbers continue to shift higher. NASDAQ 100 now up by one and a quarter percent. S&P is now up by eight tenths percent right now. And we got the Dow up by four tenths percent. You got to check back in because we're only seven minutes in the trading day. But we now got Starbucks up 20%. It's going to be interesting to see what that pay package is, man. When they added $16 billion in market cap the day after they hired a gentleman, and you got Chipotle down by 10.9%. Pretty remarkable, man. They get it done. Home Depot shares almost flat, only off $2 right now. We jump over to Lowe's on their numbers. Lowe's basically flat at 231 right now. And, yeah, it's quite a run. And tech stocks, they're going to like it, man. Why are tech stocks going to like it? Tech stocks are going to like it because if the – Producer price index is weaker than you expected. That gives the Fed one more reason why they can potentially cut. You're seeing it right now with the NASDAQ 100 up by 228 points right now. Quite the acceleration of higher prices. NVIDIA, the poster boy, up by $3.50, 112 You were just trading at $90 last Monday. Just like that, you're at $112 for NVIDIA. You talk about volatility. All right, folks, we got a treat. I got to check out a little bit early today, but our man Basil Chapman, he's in the den. He's ready. He's coming to finish up the program right now, and he's going to roll right into his Tiger Technician's Hour. So you got a good hour and 20 minutes of our man Basil Chapman. Don't forget, that Basil's outstanding opening call. Check that out on the front page of TFN. Basil's in there. He's ready. He's coming back, folks. I'll see you tomorrow for the CPI. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for Basil. He's coming right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, uh, Basil Chapman, you're continuing. Uh, Tommy had to leave early, so I'm taking over. So this is the 13th, Tuesday, the 13th of August. And we're looking at the Dow 221 at, uh, at uh, 39,580. What's really important about this, we're testing once again this um, intermediate term, uptrend line intermediate term based on the daily chart, not the weekly chart. But it does go from uh, the beginning of June that low that was made at round number 38,000 in the Dow, all the way to the low that was made about uh, eight sessions ago. And then we gapped down on that. For, that was Friday. Then we capped down last Monday, uh, 1,000 points, remember. Now what's interesting is that this trend line is being tested. I love these trend lines, diagonal trend line. <clears throat> all it says is as long as the price keeps hanging on this area, <clears throat> At this particular point, it will allow the MACD, which is so weak, this is the Dow daily, um, to start to see the histogram. You see these little vertical lines here? As they start to improve, that's a really good sign because it says at some point the differential between this uh, the slow moving average, the 26 period exponential moving average, the red line, and the green line, which is the nine period differential, uh, that aperture closes, and that's important. The unbalanced volume, eh, it's just okay. Stochastic is improving, but still only at 37% after a fabulous takeoff from the 38,499 low um, of last Monday. So what we're looking at here is a work in progress. The, the weekly chart, yeah, the 9 period moving average is still good. Monthly chart still good, but you've got to see. I want by Friday, I want to see the Dow testing uh, 39,800, then 39,900, and then touch 40,000. Maybe it won't be this week, but certainly by next week. Definitely the 39,500 support is very important. I'd say not 500, 39,200 support is really important. Okay, let's go on. Um, so uh, Tommy was talking about rates, etc. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but this is actually a leg B in the stochastic, uh, in the S&P uh, up 45 at 5,390. What's really important about this is look at the differential between um, the histogram in the MACD improving so nicely. Yes, it's still minus 7 in the 0% line, but why? If that can go to positive, that'll be a big deal. And stochastic is much better than 27% of the Dow. is at 45%. And the unbalanced volume is rising a little bit. Relative strength is actually quite good. So this is very nice action. Then you've got the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone uh, right there from the inverted. No, this is the falling axe formation. And that just says that any time in the next week and a half, 40, uh, 48,000, 
48,000. 5,481. If we can get there and we're only at 5,395, that's a big ask. But that's what you need to really see an improvement. I like what I'm seeing. QQQ. Uh, up 1.2%. The Dow is up 6.67%. S&P is up 0.94%. And that's important. So the Qs are really uh, showing uh, residual strength still leg A. And here again, the nine period moving average is very, uh, it, it's still very weak under the 14, but the MACD is just about across positive. The stochastic is uh, only at 44%, but it is improving on balance bond. Relative strength is improving nicely. But you want to see that green, that, that nine period moving average go from pink to green. It's going to take quite a lot to do that. We've got a resistance here. Let me just draw it in. So it's very simple. I take the outer lines. Right there, hit that. There we are. So going to four, uh, four. I say four fifty nine, four sixty would be really important. We're at four fifty seven twenty two. Let's go to the uh, IWM. The IWM is the Russell two thousand, up point nine seven percent, up a dollar ninety five, a two hundred six point fifty four, acting quite nicely. So okay, gold. Gold is up uh, $8 at 2513 right on the inside track repellent zone. Remember, this is what we call the inside track. There's two little mini channel lines right here. Mini only in the sense that it's a very narrow uh, range. So if we can start to go above uh, the high that was made on the 2nd of um, March of 2000. 522.5, that's going to be really important because immediately it takes the left side high of the 17th of July at uh, 25,033, yeah, 25,000, 2,533.35.3 would be the, the level that we're watching. And key support now is in the 20, I'd say 2492, 2488 area. All right, let's get on. We're going to go to silver. Silver is uh, eh, down 27 cents to 27.73. Chart pattern hasn't been good. High grade copper, maybe it's nope, it's down again, down three cents at 4.03. High grade copper, high grade copper is high grade copper. This is crude oil down 84 cents at 79.22. Spectacular session yesterday, stalling a bit today. Uh, GDX, we want to see the GDX. Ah, uh, nice. It's up 16 cents at 37.06. I kind of like the pattern of the, of the gold right now. I want to go to bonds, and we're going to go to the TLT. The TLT is trading up uh, 40 cents at 97.01. Yeah, it's getting inside. This it needs a lot of work to be able to get to either a continuation of leg C above 99.94 in the weekly chart, or maybe if it's next week going towards 100 uh, for a leg D. Uh, it's a work in progress. Let's put it that way. TBT. Uh, let me go to the TBT. That's the inversion. TBT, yeah, it's pulling back, but it hasn't broken the left side low. It is down 21 cents. The yields are coming down a little bit. Okay. Um, so to follow through with what uh, Tommy was talking about, he was talking about the yields. And what I'm going to say is that the 200 period moving average of the TBT, which is the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond ETF, is at 30.04. We went below it. We went to 28, I think. Yeah, 2887. I may as well just type that in. 2887. And that was when yields were sliding to the bottom. And then we popped up to the 32 level. That's that, Those are big ranges for just daily charts. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is that yields are making lower lows and lower highs. And that's important. Okay. We want to look at the HEX. The HEX is the... Uh, Philadelphia Housing Index. Haven't updated it for a little bit. I did on my weekly chart when I showed it to subscribers in my overview. I do an hour-long overview every weekend uh, just to say what we're looking to buy. You know, when I did my webinar uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was very emphatic. I said, we've built a huge cash position. We want to put it to work. We've been putting it to work, and it's it's done really well. But most importantly, what we are looking at is within the context of what to look for, I decided that on this particular pullback, 
when we get back into the market, we're going to look at, try, it's very hard just to think that you're, you're doing it perfectly, but I'm trying my best to go to areas that are working. I don't want to, I, I, I might take, when we have taken something that looked very good technically, that wasn't in the, the sexy area right now, because it looked good for the longer term, but mostly we want what's working. I'm the Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting for the uh, final two segments of Tommy's show. He had to leave early. And, you know, I, I love listening to Tommy's show because he, he covers... Uh, the technicals, but he does the fundamentals in such a such an, an a, such an articulate way that it really it helps because I think it's important to keep the fundamentals in in mind, especially when you're looking trying to combine the fundamentals to the technicals. So it's just a, a great you know morning market kickoff, really a great show to listen to, um, and of course he's got a newsletter. But uh, in the meantime, just as we're going to wrap up before I go to my usual time, my ten o'clock Tiger Technicians Hour. I just wanted to say that this big bounce, this opening salvo that we're looking at in the where did I go? In the Dow, this trend line right here, this is look at how formidable it's been as resistance. If we can start to turn this rising diagonal trend line of the Dow into support, it'll help get that pink nine period moving average to finally go green above the black, and that's gonna be an effort. So this early morning market open is something to monitor very closely because this is exactly where the next half hour is going to be the test 
of whether we get follow through to the upside. And if you're looking at the E-mini, look at this on the uh, 10 minute chart, uh, you know, wrong one, right here. The E-mini on the 10 minute chart, let me go to the short term trading, there it is. So I had a question for myself that is really A, B, C, and that we're actually in D right now. Um, I'm gonna do a little work during the break. Um, when we come back, we'll we'll see what's going on. So I'm going to, I don't hear anything. Did I do something to the sound? I'm not hearing, I don't hear the, the bell going for the end of the this particular show. So what we're looking at is, is there now a turn down uh, as we saw yesterday, we're in the first, uh, going to the 10 o'clock hour, we saw the market turn around and then it w went down for the rest of the day. I'm not sure I'm seeing quite that right now, but I am seeing a digestive phase that they could unfold and we'll see what happens. We've got a peak F, maybe in the five minute chart we for this bar to finish. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to just uh, hearken to my... Uh, my engineer yep i guess the sound is still going on so let, let me do this in my show okay there it is so my show coming up the target technicians are i want to look at what are the possibilities of this rally be sustained or whether we start to see a deeper pullback uh coming up in the rest of the world. so we'll talk about that when i return and check out my daily newsletter i'll be back for the this